Hello everyone, and welcome to my updated Clutch Claw main build. If you saw my last build, you remember it used the Shara Ishvalda, you remember that we had earplugs 5 on the build. This one's using the same ideas. We're still using a heavy bowgun with wyvern snipe and close range mods to get all of our damage out. This time we have a higher damage heavy bowgun, and we're bringing agitator and peak performance rather than a skill like earplugs. So the build has changed in various ways, and the, the point here is we're trying to stack as much damage as we can because we want to know how much damage are you realistically going to do to the monster. We've chosen Velcana because Velcana is a terrific fight to be using Clutch Claw main builds on. Uh, Velcana doesn't really defend uh, his head very well, so you just kind of attach yourself to the head over and over. Uh, I, I don't even know where Velcana is at the moment. So this this is loosely what I'm calling a solo speedrun. All right, so check out this trick. Well, first we're going to eat. I could use Rocksteady here, but I'm going to save a few seconds of Rocksteady. We grab Velcana and we smack him with the claw, and this stops him from roaring. Okay, so that's the reason I did that there. The next thing we need to do is we want to get Velcana into his enraged state. So he's going to be shooting his icicles, and we're going to be shooting him in the head. Doot. All right, look at that, 644 damage in one shot. It's really decent, and it also keeps a monster's body parts wounded. So if you were to bring this build into something like multiplayer, you're going to deal a fair amount of damage, but also keep the monster wounded for your whole team. That's actually really valuable. So what we've done here, we aren't worried about pods and knocking him into a wall with a flint shot. If we were on a team, we would be worried about that, but since we're not on a team, uh, I just went ahead and skipped that. And really all I wanted to do was cause him to become enraged, and that's because we have the Agitator skill on the build. So we're running Agitator, and we're getting that bonus damage while he's enraged. We also, by the way, have Peak Performance. Somehow Peak Performance fits on the build as well. So we drop Handicraft, we pick up Agitator, and Peak Performance. We're getting a ton more damage. That was 916 damage on the head right there. Come on, Velcana. He's not too smart. I'm trying not to call him Kushala de Aura because he looks so similar to Velcana de Aura with his body shape that it's like I accidentally call him Kushala all the time. <laughs> 916 damage in one shot. Isn't that amazing? It just feels great. So what happened there, we tried to grab him while his face was in the wall, and I guess the game doesn't let you do that. So uh, you can grab a different part of his body, though, if you want to. And he just sort of roared us off of him there. Not much you can do about that. If you had the earplug skill, you would be able to get away with shooting him even though he roared. But, you know, uh, now that I'm thinking about it, using that trick at the beginning of the fight where you can claw attack him, it actually helps you avoid one of the most annoying roars anyways. And you got Rocksteady Mantle too, so it's not too bad. If you had to use a build like this on two monsters at the same time though, really the Earplex Charm I think then would still be pretty comfortable feeling. I don't know how much I like it compared to how much I like having Agitator and Peak Performance. We are technically doing more damage, and that is nice for a speed run, but having the earplugs on a, on a move where you're not allowed to dodge a roar is also nice too, because anytime a monster roars, you're still going to get your move on. You're actually going to punish that monster anytime the monster roars. So let's say you're fighting a monster who roars all the time. Well, then you probably would consider the earplugs over the Agitator, in my opinion. You'll also notice we're not healing, that's because we didn't take any heal augmentations. We went for pure attack augmentations to make sure that our Griffin Blazooka is doing more damage than the Shara Ishvala. Griffin Blazooka, of course, it gets the Elementless decorations, and it gets more uh, augmentations in general than the Shara Ishvala, and that's because the Griffin Blazooka is a lower rarity. It works just like... I think I talked about this already. Did I not mention this at the beginning of the video? Yeah, I might have already mentioned this. <laughs> what I get for doing live commentary. Uh, I, I don't have a script here, so I'm not... If, if I say something twice, you have to forgive me. All right, so I'm running a little experiment in this video, too. I'm like, how many shots does it take to break his ice armor? We've shot his uh, tummy once. We've shot his tail once at this point. We've shot his head a bunch. Oh, I'm sorry. I think we've shot the tail twice at this point. We might have shot the tail twice at this point. Let's see. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm talking and I'm watching. Now we're going to go right for the head. He's looking at my palico, so that's an easy in for us. Boop. Look at that. He's trying to stab with the tail, but the funny thing is, you get enough distance away from the monster when you use that claw attack, the clutch claw attack, that the monster's move's going to miss you. Okay, here we go. The second attack on the tail, right? There it is. And you'll notice, I believe we've broken off the ice off of the tail. And now I'm thinking, you know, we should break the ice off of his body, his chest as well. Ammo, ammo, man, that's so much damage, it's ridiculous. Yeah, we're trying to break the armor off of him. Second shot to the body, let's see how it goes. 
Okay, so nothing. I, and I think I go for a third shot on the body. Oh, but first I get my booty kicked. Very close to dying right there. Very close. We do have the Fortify skill, so if you were to die using this setup, you would just come back stronger. And this is especially relevant if you're playing solo. Uh, I did test the Fortify, and when it procs twice, you're actually dealing like a thousand... Was it a thousand one hundred to the head? It was a lot of damage. All right, and he got away. As soon as he jumped in the air like that, I was like, dang it, I should have had my flash pods. <laughs> but of course I didn't. Well, we might have dramatically lowered the, the length of this fight if I'd had my flash pods on me. He's not limping, you know? He's not trying to get back to his nest. All right, he didn't go too far away, so it's not so bad. All right, and here we go, another shot to the body, because I was really curious about this as well. There we go, so we caused the big knockdown by breaking all of his ice armor off. It's really interesting, the ice armor seems to be spread out between three different parts of his body, head, tail, uh, and, and body. <laughs> so if you break all three parts of the armor, you get a nice big knockdown on Velkana, and then Velkana's naked for a little while, right? Another shot to the head. Doop. He's going to sleep, and that's because my Palico has the Bond Ball. The Rado Bond Ball puts a monster to sleep, and you can wake them up with the Wyvern Ammo, which is nice because we actually do have Wyvern Ammo here. We don't have artillery, though, so you could trade out that Crit Eye for our artillery, but I wouldn't do that. There we go. There's the wake up. Dealt a, a very fine 1,200 damage total, I think, there. Maybe a little higher than that. You can see we stopped him from retreating by using a claw attack. That's where you smack him with the claw. Yeah, we actually turned him and this stops their retreat. The knockdown from the damage, or just keep doing damage on him. 700 damage there. He's no longer agitated. All right, he's really trying to get away, but we're gonna stop him with the flash pots this time. Dude, you're not going anywhere, buddy. All right, time to shoot him in the head. Watch this. Oh, he almost knocked us off. If he got that dash attack off, we would've been knocked off. And then finally, watch this. Oh, man. Pow. <laughs> what a great feeling. We got that done in seven minutes and seven seconds. Of course, it would have been faster if I had not let him escape at all. And there were a few mistakes in the run. He did hit us once or twice. I'm trying to think if there was any other ways for us to get more damage. Maybe if our Palico had had the Coral Orchestra and given us like an attack buff. But other than that, there's not a lot more ways to increase your damage. Maybe like Evasion Mantle. We could have put on Evasion Mantle and, and rolled through an attack, but you would have had to have done that successfully. Let's head back to Celiana and I'll show off the build. All right, and here we are landed in Celiana. Let me show you the difference between the Horn King Blazuka and the Shar Ishvalda Heavy Bogan. So we'll just jump over here. Notice between Solemn Reflection and Horn King Blazuka that the Blazooka is rarity 10, and the Reflection is rarity 12. And this is what's allowing you to augment the Horn King Blazooka more times. The attack is 473, which is higher than Solemn Reflection, not by a lot. And note that the Solemn Reflection has not been augmented for attack at all. So Solemn Reflection has the health boost, whereas Horn King Blazooka has the attack boost, right? Uh, they're two very different styles of augmenting. In the end, Horn King Blazooka will win, though, either way, because it has access to that elementless decoration, and that's a big deal when it comes to damage output. Uh, for the mods, of course, Reload Assist with a bunch of close range up. Now, if you don't expect to be using the Wyvern ammo very much, you'll notice in that run that we just had, I only used one shot. I didn't even need to reload it. So if you're not going to use the Wyvern ammo, I'm actually going to recommend that you drop the Reload Assist and take a shield mod instead. The shield mod will allow you to have a little bit of defense in a tight situation, right? Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the build. You'll notice most of the build... Oh, well, first of all, take a look at all those augments. <laughs> Woo! Attack increase 4. That's what's bringing the Horn King Blazooka's damage up over Shara Ishvalda. So that's... If you can't afford to do that, go ahead and just continue to use the Shara Ishvalda Heavy Bowgun, right? Go ahead and continue to use that. Don't worry about Griffin Blazooka for now. Now for the, the skills. Crit Eye 4 is to bring your affinity up to 0. And then it pairs with Crit Draw. Crit Draw is bringing your affinity to 100 when you draw the weapon. And that, of course, is pairing with Crit Boost and is pairing with Frostcraft. We also have Quick Sheath, so you can put your weapon away quickly. And then this is going to pair with Crit Draw, right? So tons of synergy right away with all the skills. Agitator instead of Earplugs. But if you really wanted to, you could put Agitator away and bring those Earplugs. I would say it just depends on who you're fighting and, you know, how comfortable you want to be. 
Agitator does contribute to your damage output, but I would say it's not like a make or break deal. It's, it's optional. It's optional. Uh, you could also trade Agitator out for, once again, Resentment. If you're going to fight like in a volcanic region, you get, get a little more damage. Don't drink your cool drink. You'll notice also the Fortify skill is in. You could drop Fortify if you don't intend to die at all. Like, let's say you have a fight where you're not allowed to die. Drop that and bring the last level of Divine Blessing, I would say, or a level of Health Boost is up to you, whatever you think is more valuable. And then the Mantles, we just, you know, Tool Specialist in the Mantles. It probably doesn't even help that much. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so this is the, I don't know whether to call it the Clutch Claw Build 2 or an updated build. I would say Clutch Claw Build 2 because it's relying on Griffin, Griffin Blazooka and all of those augmentations for attack increase 4. So if you don't have this, you got to go with the other build, all right? And if you haven't seen the other build, I'll leave a link to it in the description and in the comment section of the video. That's the end of this video. I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.